Hello, everyone. Happy Saturday. This is Helene from the Plant Based Network, Virtual Veg Fest, Triangle Veg Fest, and Veg Fest Expos. And we are here today live with Dr. Joel Kahn, which I'm super excited about. Yay. So, if you don't know about Virtual Veg Fest, please go to virtualvegfest.com and subscribe to our newsletter and shop and support our vendors. And of course, you can watch these lives on there too. And then our YouTube channel, Virtual Veg Fest, you can subscribe and watch all our talks that we've done over the past few months. So thank you to the Plant Based Network as our sponsor of our lives this week. We really appreciate them. And of course, they're our partner. So let's talk about Dr. Joel Kahn. Now, one, if you didn't know, he has a show on the Plant Based Network called The Kahn Chronicle. I took the time and watched all three episodes today. I know, so you know, it's right. It's on the screen. Yeah, but I didn't want to so there's there's three episodes right now on the Plant Based Network, which you can watch on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, or of course you can just go to plantbasednetwork.com and watch on the on the internet. I picked this screen, the number three episode, for a specific reason. It influenced my lunch today. Potatoes and muscle mass. Potatoes are incredibly important. They're really delicious food. And, you know, a lot of people tell you not to eat them. However, he said eat potatoes. And I was like, yes. So I had a potato for lunch. So Dr. Dole Khan is in Michigan. He is a holistic cardiologist. He's an author. Obviously, he has a show on the plant-based network. And I like to throw it at the people to actually say who they are and what they do. And I'm sure this man can talk and he's going to make us laugh too. But if you are watching, please say hello. Please make a comment. Please ask questions. And hopefully my dogs don't bark. So Dr. Khan, let's go. Let's do it. Thanks a lot, Helene. And uh, I am sitting in suburban Detroit. <laughs> there we go. In my medical office. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have had that chili for lunch. It just was making my stomach crawl. No, that was a dog barking. Uh, I'm in my cardiology clinic. I am a board certified cardiologist. In fact, I have three board certifications. I see patients literally from all over the world, from Australia to India to California to Florida, uh, north and south. Uh, I practice traditional cardiology, integrative cardiology, and plant-based cardiology. And been doing that for about 30 years and have written six books and many blogs and show up on national TV. But I love teaching, and I know Helene is going to kick it off in terms of perhaps some questions. Uh, if not, I have lots I can always say. And I do invite you to stay at theplantbasednetwork.com and check out the uh, button for the Con Chronicle, which you can look at the first three episodes. You give me feedback. It's great. My email is drkahn at kahncenter.com. D-R-K-A-H-N at K-A-H-N center.com. Uh, but they're doing a great job with the show and we have many more episodes to come. Very fast paced, informative, plant-based news. So let's throw it back to the dog Barker and Helene <laughs> and see where we're at. Yeah, that's, yeah, I never know. We, we discuss it. You can see they're all over the place. So you just never know when the dogs are going to bark. So since I brought out the potatoes and people haven't watched the show, potentially, if you have, then you know what I learned today, which I kind of understood already, but it was really exciting to learn that potatoes and muscle mass and that it was a study about women and, you know, eating potatoes would keep your, would keep your muscle mass up, which is really cool. So I'd love for you to like delve more into that. And of course, like what the concept, how did you come up with? The Khan Chronicle. Sure. Um, well, just to talk about potatoes for 90 seconds, there have been longtime plant-based champions of potatoes. Certainly John McDougall, MD, would come to mind, a, a potato pusher. Um, there's the famous Australian Andrew Taylor, who goes on social media as SpudFit. And if you don't know his story, he ate nothing but potatoes, boiled, steamed, baked potatoes of every color without anything on them for a year medical supervision and lost well over 100 pounds. He's got a great book out. I contributed a potato recipe, of course. You had to contribute a potato recipe. Um, and then maybe you don't know, but Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller Comedians, who is vegan for the past four and a half, five years, uh, lost over 100 pounds and kicked that off 
with two weeks of nothing but potatoes. In fact, if you eat cold potatoes, bake your potatoes and let them chill, they concentrate something called resistant starch, uh, which is a prebiotic, feeds your gut very healthy uh, nutrients for all those trillions of bacteria. So this particular study proved the point that um, another topic we can talk about now or another time, I just wrote a blog this week about how plant proteins are so much more favorable for the body than animal-based proteins. Now, of course, if you're eating a steak, it's not just protein, it's saturated fat, it's antibiotics, it's chemicals, it's hormones, where with a potato, you're pretty much getting potato. Uh, but there's enough protein amino acids in potatoes for women who are studied formally to maintain their muscle mass. So you could throw your chicken, your tilapia, your uh, pork away and transition to sweet potatoes, baked potatoes, white potatoes, uh, Idaho potatoes, the whole gamut. And you have a good shot of upgrading your health tremendously and uh, actually do it without becoming you know, a frail, blow in the wind kind of person. So let's celebrate the potato. A lot of people over a lot of centuries have relied on them. I know we have a couple people that have uh, chimed in and hello back Donna and shout out to Vicki in Spokane, Washington. I hope things are peaceful and good there. Awesome. So how did you come up with the idea for the Kong Chronicle? Yeah, so uh, I'll tell you the inside story because I don't know that Ron Gandiza, the mastermind of the Plant-Based Network, will tell you this. But I pitched him about a year ago. I've known him for about five years. Let's do a news show on the Plant-Based Network. But at the time, the world was very different. And uh, the response was great. Come to Atlanta, our studio that we plan to use in Atlanta. And it turns out I actually have a medical license and an office in Atlanta, but I don't go there very much. And it wasn't very practical, but in the last little bit with the world turned upside down, we reconnected on the idea of doing a fast paced, informative plant-based news show uh, that would be on the plant-based network. And here we got three episodes, the dream became reality. Well, it turns out I've had the habit every day, 365 days a year, it's almost an addiction, I'm on 20 different news sites, reading about medical news, plant-based news, research, lifestyle. And I would tweet out, you know, 30 tweets every morning. Uh, I just enjoy it. It keeps me sharp. Somebody brings up a topic. You ever heard anything about whole grain and fiber and breast cancer reduction? I could say, oh yeah, April 2nd, there was a study that hit the news uh, and that kind of ability to respond. So I took those tweets and made a news sheet called the Con Chronicle, actually hashtag Con Chronicle. It's on my major website, drjoelcon.com. And I really didn't know how many people were looking at it. I would mention it on my podcast. I would mention it on a TV interview uh, as something people could go to for free. But I said to Ron, let's just call it the Con Chronicle. Let's use it to launch the show. All I have to do, since it changes every day, the 25 articles on Saturday won't be the 25 articles on Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. They just keep renewing as I keep tweeting. Um, and anyways, that's what we do on the show. We just go to the actual live version of the Con Chronicle. There's always fascinating and sometimes just straightforward. Health advantages of sunflower seeds and edamame beans, new research on potatoes and muscle mass. Um, is vegan keto a real deal and how do you do it? Uh, and it's always uh, fun for me to stay up to date. And we do a fun little fact like, you know, well, what vitamin uh, is so essential for our immune health right now, but humans have no ability to make and we have to get from food and people have to listen to all 15 minutes of the Khan Chronicle to get the answer to the question, which is vitamin C. Uh, but humans are one of only four species on the planet that have no ability to make vitamin C. Your dog that barked, your cat that went across the screen can make all the vitamin C they need for optimal health and uh, immunity. Uh, whereas we are completely dependent on eating red bell peppers and oranges and tangerines and arugula and all the great sources we have of vitamin C. So it's a fun fact and it stimulates me to come up with these concepts. 
Right. And you need to, you can still watch episode one, even though you know the answer to the fun fact. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't <laughs> forget to do that. Even though he told you the answer, you should still watch the whole thing. <laughs> Be honest, watch the whole thing. Right. I mean, really, it's, it's about 15 to 17 minutes of your time. It's not a lot of time to devote. However, it's really great information. And of course, you can always go follow up on what you're talking about on your website and go to the Con Chronicle on your actual website, too. Right. Which is very cool. Excellent. And I know Elizabeth is watching. So hi, Elizabeth, even though you haven't said anything. It's really good that you're here. And so what else? So holistic cardiologist, great words to put together, right? I'd like to know how you got that title. Um, yeah, that specific title, America's Holistic Heart Doc, which I have actually twisted a bit now on my website is America's Healthy Heart Doc. Some people uh, respond well to the word holistic. Some people think it's a little goofy. But when I broke out of the pack, I have been practicing cardiology with my medical degree for 30 years, and I had trained for almost a decade before that. So it's been a long time. Um, about 10 years ago, I decided, you know, all this plant-based knowledge, because I'd been vegan for 43 years, a long time. Um, and I had gone back and done some university training in integrative medicine. Um, I approached Reader's Digest. I said, I'd love to write for your magazine, and I want you to publish my first book. They actually said yes to both of those, and I wrote for their magazine for a couple of years. And my first book called Your Whole Health Solution, still a great book. It became a national public television special for a year. Um, they picked that title. We're going to label you in our magazine as America's Holistic Heart Doctor. So, and in fact, the book was originally called The Holistic Heart Book, and it morphed into Your Whole Heart Solution. At any rate, that was their title. That's a nice title. Uh, and now I kind of have upgraded it to, you know, uh, America's Healthy Heart Doc. And I guess it'd be fair to actually call it international because of all the ability to reach people everywhere. I got emailed today from Mumbai, India to do a heart consult this weekend. It is a, a wonderful thing how we can connect. Yes. Is, is Reader's Digest still out there? Believe it or not, they are. You know, like all um, print magazines, they've contracted. I know they did get in a little financial trouble like so many print magazines. But they have a pretty good online presence. And there's still millions of readers, you know, that have just grown up with uh, humor in America and all the kind of columns that have been there for decades and decades. So for the people who are younger than us, because <laughs> I know what Reader's Digest is, I grew up with it. There's probably people who have no clue what we're talking about. <laughs> Reader's Digest is a tame version of People Magazine or, you know, us. I mean, it's a, it's a usually a small print magazine that used to come in something called the mailbox. Probably people don't know what that is anymore. <laughs> I was walking with my wife and uh, two or three dogs today because sometimes we inherit one of our kids' dogs. And we walked by an older house uh, near us and it actually had a, a milk chute. And I actually laughed and I said, that house <laughs> looks like what I grew up with with a milk chute. Pointed out there is a milk chute, which is where the milkman used to bring the cold milk, put it in a little spot. You opened a little flap inside your house, took it. You know, that was the you know high security of the whole thing. Reader's Digest is kind of like the same reference as a milk <laughs> Um, It was one of the most respected and widely read magazines in America, like National Geographic, like Look Magazine, nobody remembers that, Life Magazine, Time Magazine, Newsweek. You know, these have all gone basically uh, down because of Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and all the other you know, media that give us instant gratification. Right, exactly. Thank you for that, because I'm pretty sure there's some things people talk about where the, the much younger generation just like don't know what we're talking about at all. Right. <laughs> like Johnny Carson. <laughs> gotcha. right, right. So now I think it's really important. I feel it's very important that we just we talk about heart health because sure. it is the number one killer of us humans. And I'd love for you to touch on that. Of course, if anyone has any questions, there's your opportunity. Please write them in the comments and we'll get to them. But let's talk about heart health. Sure. Heart health in under five minutes. So don't leave. Uh, <laughs> and don't turn this off and share with other people. Uh, there's all kinds of heart issues. 
Uh, some are affecting infants, congenital heart disease. That's not my area. I won't go there. Uh, the one you want to worry about and the one that's relevant for plant-based diets mainly is the fact here's our heart beating 70 times a minute, or if we go to the gym, maybe it's beating 120 times a minute. It can only do that if three arteries, three pipes, sitting on top of the heart, because they do sit on top of the heart with little branches into the heart, remain clean and wide open pipes. We have three wonderful fuel lines or pipes. <laughs> and the good news is for dogs, dogs' arteries never get clogged up. So it's okay. Fido gave us a little example there to mention that. Dogs have completely different physiology of their intestinal tract and the way they absorb nutrients. You feed a dog meat all day long, it will not damage those arteries. But you take a human, we are the exact opposite. We're much more like guinea pigs in many different ways. In fact, guinea pigs can't make vitamin C either. And that is one of the reasons we are prone to developing clogging of arteries. So by the time you're 18, if you went through a little ultrasound in your neck, you have arteries here called your carotid arteries. You probably got a little damage already to your arteries, at least if you live in Louisiana where they have done that. If you're a 24-year-old soldier who served in desert storm in Iraq and you happen to have been killed in an explosion, you probably have some narrowing already going on in your heart arteries. It, these arteries are very prone to getting clogged up. Smoking does it. If you're significantly overweight or snoring, sleep apnea, if your cholesterol is high, if your blood pressure is high, if your blood sugar is high, there are some genetic influences. You can inherit a high cholesterol. Many of my uh, plant-based patients eat nothing but greens and their cholesterol is 280 and they're really frustrated because genetics do matter. They're not the biggest factor, but they do matter. This is a moment of uh, marketing uh, and promotion, so hold on. I've written six books. This is my most recent book. It came out in March 2020. The reason I pointed out, lipoprotein A, if anybody can read that, the heart's quiet killer with a beautiful dish on top. Uh, this is a genetic cholesterol that one out of every four people inherit, but your doctor undoubtedly has never checked it on you or your wellness corporate program. It's maybe a $30 blood test. And if you go in next time and you say, hey, I heard a cardiologist talk about a reason my arteries can get clogged up. And it's called lipoprotein A. Can I get that checked with my lab work? Hopefully you can convince your nurse practitioner, physician assistant, or doctor to do that. It is by far the most common genetic reason we clog up our arteries. And your perfect lifestyle might still not turn out necessarily well if you're carrying that in your blood. And then we can talk about some other time what to do about it. So I am a proponent. I have a couple things I say all the time on social media and in my clinic. Uh, one is test, not guess. You may feel fine. It doesn't mean things are going well. They may be, I'm not Debbie Downer, but you may be developing the disease. Get the extra blood work. Read some of the materials I've written, like my first book, your whole heart solution that goes through how do you check your heart out when you're 35, 40, 45. It's something I talk about all the time. Test, not guess. Another term I say all the time, it's a little technical, is prevent, not stent. I'm an expert on how to put a stent, a little stainless mesh into arteries, but I'd much rather prevent the disease. And we know that about 85% of strokes, heart attacks, and deaths due to heart disease are preventable partly by identifying these genetic factors, mainly by not smoking, making sure you exercise and making sure you eat your whole food plant diet. But prevent, not stent. Let's try and teach everybody from children on up that diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, heart disease, blood pressure, cholesterol, at least some cancers are much more lifestyle related than genetic related. And we have, we have control, we have the power to uh, you know, try and lead a long and healthy life free of the medical um, industry, you know, free of drugs, free of surgery, free of being in hospitals. Uh, that's what we should be shooting for and teaching. So that's what I talk about all the time. Um, so don't let your arteries get clogged. You know, start as early as you can in life. It's never too late, but get your kids on a good lifestyle program. Uh, it turns out with this current 
you know, pandemic and COVID-19. It's probably exactly the same lifestyle of whole food, plant-based, brightly colored fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, along with some exercise, some sleep, some stress management, and avoiding smoking that optimizes our uh, immune system also. So these are what I love to talk about. It's tragic. I have Google alerts for like the word heart attack. And you read about there was a 33-year-old woman in the news this week had a heart attack. 39-year-old actor in India, famous Bollywood actor, died last week of a heart attack. I mean, these are preventable and it's a huge flaw in our medical system that we're not teaching. Just like a woman gets a mammogram and everybody should get a colonoscopy at some point, we should be doing better testing of the heart. But stack the odds in your favor. You know, don't eat a beef burger, eat a bean burger or a beet burger. Don't grab for whole milk, grab for hemp milk and stack things in your favor. Right. This is, a, <laughs> I'm sorry about that with the docs. They went ballistic. So, uh, oh, okay. we didn't hear it actually. And if there was any cruelty involved, please cut that out. <laughs> no, I was at, I has had one, but never knew. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, he had a heart attack. He didn't know. So wow. there's a difference. There's something when I was uh, doing the ethical choices, I was an educator with ethical choices program and, and we would go into the classroom and there was something that I brought up in the, when I would do the talk is that men and women have different symptoms of having a heart attack, which is not very well known because yeah. most people think of the, what you see on television, the clutching of the chest, right? you know, the, of my arm, the falling to the floor. Women have completely different symptoms. Can yeah. you go into that? Because that's something that I think everyone needs to know. And I've, I've read a, I've read an article about a man who saved his wife's life because she was up in the middle of the night, like nauseous and sick and diarrhea, and she just couldn't shake it. And she and he was like, we should go to the hospital. And she said, no, it's just a stomach virus. And he was like, no, I think we should go to the hospital. I think you might be having a heart attack. That's a good and, man. And, uh, yes, yeah, saved her life. And it's the, the widow maker. Right. Right. The Widowmaker, yeah, I've, uh, there's a, just a shout out for education. If anybody has time tonight or tomorrow night on Netflix, there's a documentary called The Widowmaker Movie. And when I talked about test, not guess, it talks about a heart test. Whether you're vegan or not, you should know about this heart test. And not when you're 20 years old, but maybe by the time you're 40, 45, you should beg your doctor for a prescription and go get the test they talk about in The Widowmaker Movie. So, Again, I like to be succinct. If you are on a treadmill, a bicycle, you're hiking uphill and you start to feel heavy, pressure, squeezing, oppressive, sweating, shortness of breath, and you sit down on a bench and it goes away in two minutes, that might be your heart. That's called angina pain or angina, any way you wanna say it. It's a Latin word for choking. Brought on by exertion, brought on by cold weather, brought on by exciting nookie time, because sex can bring it on goes away in a couple of minutes when you slow down and relax. That's angina, very serious warning sign. Men get it, women get it. Men are a little more prone to have that. And that is kind of the classic I'm showing you here. It's called Levine sign, pressure in my chest. But there are patients and men do it, but women are more common. They might just be on the treadmill and feel some discomfort in their back. Well, you don't usually think back pain and heart, it can be. Might feel it in the jaw might feel in the throat, but it's not in the chest. Or, you know, might be left shoulder, but it's not in the chest. Anything that comes on with exertion goes away quickly at rest, comes on walking through the cold parking lot, goes away when you get in the warm building, you should get medical attention to. What may be unique for women is feeling palpitations, feeling nausea, feeling sweating, feeling dizziness, feeling fatigue as a heart symptom. Now that's tricky because there's a lot of other reasons to have all of those symptoms. But in particularly, if you think your risk is up, I, Doc, I just quit smoking three months ago. I am struggling with my weight, my blood sugar, my blood pressure. My doctor did check and I've got a sky high genetic inheritance, lipoprotein little a. My dad, my mom, my brother, my sister, grandparents and uncles have heart disease. You know, if you're having new symptoms like those that I described, nausea, palpitations, weakness, fatigue, shortness of breath, you know, 
go watch the Widowmaker movie because that's the way you can quickly get to the bottom accurately at a very safe and low cost approach on whether you are gliding through life with a healthy heart or maybe deceiving yourself and not having such a healthy heart. Yeah, thank you very much for that because it's I, I was saying that to children, you know, high school students that there's a, there's a difference in how many women experience this and you know going into the whole medical system that you know they're not really testing on women to figure out and not really promoting how women right. are have issues in their medical issues and i am gender blind i mean there is a statistic that heart attack rates go up in women after menopause but there are women before menopause that have clogged arteries and are at risk certainly diabetics and smokers and people with genetic cholesterol disorders. What's just freaky, and maybe you guys have seen this headline, is since COVID became a factor in mid-March, late March, you know, the number of people being admitted to hospitals across the United States with strokes and heart attacks are down as much as 50%. So where are these people? Um, is it that home cooking and getting out of the corporate atmosphere and not driving an hour to work actually drops heart attack rates? Maybe, um, you know, some people have chosen, 20% of people in a recent poll have chosen to eat much healthier during COVID pandemic and 60% are eating exclusively at home, tends to be a better choice. Maybe we've actually made some inroads on the actual root causes of heart attack. The other scary possibility is people are sitting at home and either thinking they're having a heart attack or not, and simply not calling 911 out of fear of going to the hospital. and. Uh, certainly at this point, most hospitals are not overwhelmed like they were in early April. So, I mean, do not delay. There's uh, denial, de delay, death. That's the three Ds that happens all the time. It's not my heart. I'll wait till the morning and the morning never comes. Right, right, right. Oh, there's an interesting comment coming. They all died with COVID. Don't fool yourselves. Possibly. Uh, um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Possibly, possibly not. We, you know, it's possible, <laughs> but we don't know. So uh, that's part of the scariness. Yeah. It's pretty oh, easy to diagnose the kind of heart attack that I've dealt with, you know, thousands of times. You show up in an emergency room, you get an EKG, boom, you're on your way to get treatment. So uh, yeah, you wouldn't wait and take a nasal swab in the ER if somebody's got the typical symptoms. It's uh, it's simply, I think people aren't going to the hospital. So need to open up people's mind and get them back. But I'm always an upstream guy. I want to talk to you 15 years before that day happens. So that day never happens. Right. Changing your diet, what you put it, what you fuel your body with, exercising. And one of the things that in so the conference management, yeah, yes, was children having heart disease. Right. Uh, you know, there's clear-cut data, like I mentioned. One thing we know for sure, you're born with beautiful arteries uh, that are free of this disease. But by the age 15, 17, 18, 20, 22, 25, we're on our way, slowly, progressively, slowly, progressively. So when you, you know, when you're in grief and you say, oh my God, I can't believe that 39-year-old Indian actor dropped dead and how tragic, of which it is, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Um, you know, you could have at age 35, 30, 25 picked up some clue. We just don't have it built in the system. If you ever heard your doctor say you're going for the heart mammogram test, um, good. And I wish they would. That's what that movie, the Widowmaker movie. I am not in that movie. It was made before uh, I got on this bandwagon of test not guess, but uh, we could have. So children, uh, I mean, there's wonderful data that, you know, I've had the good fortune since age 18 of having an extremely healthy diet and very often fitness and sleep and stress management to match it, even going through medical training, which is sort of crazy. But I, I didn't go to the barbecue houses in Kansas City and the steakhouses in Dallas, Texas. I went to the salad bar. If we can get our kids on good lifestyle programs, uh, you know, it's just, you know, multiplying the benefit to their health and reducing the chance we'll have children that grow up to be sick adults. Right. Totally see your comments and about your PhD and tests work false negatives and positives. 
And as much as I want to touch on that, being that it's it's COVID related, right. we're not focusing on COVID today. Right. We're focusing more on heart health and the Con Chronicle. And right. We're, we're not ignoring the fact it's that COVID. A big enough exists. topic as it is. Right. So I just want you to know that and appreciate the fact that you have a PhD and that there are, uh, we totally get that there's issues out there. But yeah, you know, we all have heard hashtag fake news. And I'm not, this isn't a political interview and we're going to stay out of politics. But, you know, some of you are aware that there was a publication two weeks ago about the failure of the hot drug for COVID, hydroxychloroquine, the failure of this drug to remedy people with COVID-19, published in the two best medical journals in the world, New England Journal of Medicine and Lancet, one from Boston, one from London. And within a very short time, it became obvious that this was nothing but a pile of dog poop research. Um, they actually quoted hospitals as having contributed patients to show that hydroxychloroquine was of no value. And these hospitals said, we don't have a research program. We weren't part of this study and it's exploded and the articles have been removed and it's left a very ugly stain on the two most prestigious medical articles. So the point about who do you trust? Um, I am very careful when I talk about nutrition. Are you going to follow a keto diet, a paleo diet, a Mediterranean diet, or the one we love, a whole food plant-based diet? Um, it's not hashtag fake news that whole food plant-based diets have strong scientific support. The biochemistry, the randomized studies, the epidemiology, studying what centenarians, the old people eat, and also studying about the environment and animal rights. Um, it's all the real deal. And when you hear that the all meat diet, the carnivore diet is hot and working for people, you got to step back and say, is this another hashtag fake news? How does that make sense biochemically or in studies and all? And it doesn't. Um, I'm glad some people indicate they feel better following that path because People that feel better is one of the goals of medical care, but uh, you know people are really easily influenced by hype and pressure. And we saw that in the medical research world in the last 10 days. So uh, I do uh, share you know, some uh, overlap with Jernija Caserta's comments about um, you know, being concerned about the quality of the data that you are sharing. I, I wasn't sure if you were gonna interview me, to be honest, uh, so I brought a little prop in case I had it wax eloquent hair for 30, 40 minutes. I never mind talking to the public. There is a phenomenal book that plant-based eaters don't rely on as much as some of the others, The Longevity Diet by a Italian-born professor in Los Angeles, Walter Longo. And he is actually the most funded nutrition scientist in the United States, not even close. It's $50 million of NIH funding. Tremendous man. And he has this little structure. It's called the five pillars of longevity, the five pillars of nutrition research. Before you change your diet away from your whole food plant-based diet, because somebody's got something new, how does the biochemistry fit? How does the epidemiology, how is the randomized studies and the whole thing? And this is what I use at five pillars. If I'm debating on Joe Rogan or the doctor show or uh, commenting on nutrition on an interview and there's an opponent, um, all we got to do is let's talk about it. Let me talk about the biochemistry, about why I need to add back red meat in my diet for my protein intake. Uh, you know, what do we know about that? And you can almost always win the day with a logical approach to nutrition. Awesome. A couple of questions. Elizabeth is asking, how do you, how do you help change people's minds? Those are first to going vegan. Um, how do I change your mind to become vegan? I mean, I, I have a feeling this is personal because I'm pretty sure Elizabeth is vegan, plant based, and her husband is. Vegan. Me my, right, those are first to going vegan. Okay. And I just want to say, Bona Sera. Oh, no, that's Romanian. No, it is okay. No, it's Italian. Oh, I want, yeah, that's Italian. Yeah, it's the same Romanian and Italian because. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Caserta is uh, telling me that she's of, you know, in origin from my favorite country, Italy, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a whole nother conversation. Olive oil, yes or no? Go try and convince <laughs> them 
go try and convince convince Walter Longo that there's anything wrong with olive oil. He actually talks quite a bit about that in his book, as do some others. But you know, uh, there is a psychological um, construct called Prochaska's theory of behavioral change. I am not a PhD. I'm not a psychologist. But you can't get through an undergrad psychology course without learning about Prochaska's theory of change. And the bottom line is there are people, there's a, I think it was Juliana Hever, the plant-based dietitian that I first saw say, you can take a person to a salad bar, but you can't make them eat. There are people that aren't ready and they're stubborn. Uh, can you imagine they're stubborn humans? There's very little you can do with a stubborn human. They might have had bypass surgery, three strokes, erectile dysfunction, and their legs chopped off. And they want to eat cheeseburgers, fries, and milkshakes. All you can do is be kind to them, ask them to watch Forks Over Knives, ask them to read my book, The Plant-Based Solution. They might, they might not, but leave a bridge so that when they're ready, hopefully, you haven't burned the bridge and ticked them off. You know, we don't want to be ugly, ugly. That's a plant-based solution. Look how pretty that covers. That was book number five. The uh, other one is book number six. Um, you know, there are people that the door is open. And what I do in my office is I take out a prescription pad and I write on my prescription pad, here's three movies to watch tonight. Forks over eyes, what the health, game changers. If they need to learn about that CT scan, then I tell them to watch the Widowmaker movie. You know, if they watch one of them, it's a home run. If they watch all three, I mean, they're a different person when I see them back. Um, a lot of people will watch a video quicker than they'll read a book. Um, if not, and again, I have a podcast every week that goes 20 minutes. A lot of people say, okay, I'll tell you what, I can do a 20 minute podcast on my way to work. Uh, it, you know, nobody's going to work anymore. So they have to do a 20 minute podcast on a walk. But, um, you know, some people like to listen more than they like to read a book. Um, and, you know, that's uh, the bottom line. The reality is they can turn on their TV any night of the week and hear somebody bashing veganism or promoting meat diets. It's very confusing out there. And, um, you know, many, many people have seen my friend Mark Hyman, MD, talk about eat fat, get thin, why adding butter back to your diet is good for you. And he's got a very big profile and is very convincing. So they get confused. And that's why a format like this that we can ask and answer some questions is a value. Oh, yeah. So I knew Elizabeth is married to a stubborn person <laughs> that has a lot of these issues. And a stubborn <laughs> Italian. I cannot imagine. It's, oh, mama mia, what's going on? I mean, absolutely wonderful people. Elizabeth lives in my community and a little backstory in her. She is one of our vendors. She does doTERRA and they started doing our events, not vegan, not plant-based and just came, learned, ate the food and slowly her and her sister just transitioned. And then one day they just said to me, Hey, guess what? <laughs> we're now plant-based and we're part of plant pure nation and Kim and you and Kim Campbell and Nelson Campbell. And I was like, that's amazing. So the little influences, like what you're saying, live by example, don't pressure. And you know what? You live a happy, healthy lifestyle with tons of energy. People are attracted to that. Right. And they'll watch what you're eating. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the, in the days, again, you have to always talk about the pre-COVID days when you'd walk through a restaurant. I could just see people that knew me covering up their plate because <laughs> they want to see that, that they were eating four pounds of spare ribs and coming to the office to see me the next day. Uh, that doesn't happen as much. But uh, this home cooking has helped to some degree. Supposedly, there's a rising interest in plant-based diets, particularly because of immune health. And we don't know for sure, but it's a far better place to be to give up soda pop and processed foods and... Uh, certainly processed meats, the bacon, the sausages, the hot dogs, the mortadella, and, you know, just pack your plate with fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes for sure. And then there's a previous question. That's a good one that fills into what we were talking about. Is heart disease still the number one killer of women? Yeah, it is. There, the statistic is that since 1919, for 101 years, heart disease in the United States has been the number one cause of death. Heart disease includes heart attacks, strokes, uh, peripheral arterial diseases like gangrene and aneurysms. 
Number one, every year for 101 years. There was a month or two, like April, that uh, apparently in, for that month, there were more COVID deaths than heart deaths. Uh, but that has fallen off and heart disease hasn't. Um, it's a shocking number and it's uh, as big a deal for women than men. Men do tend to be, because uh, I look for examples to be uh, kind, but to teach with, you know, this sudden dropping dead, it's called sudden death or sudden cardiac death. That's more likely to be a man and it's likely to be a young man, 40, 45, 50. Women get heart disease, but they tend, as I said, to clog up their arteries, particularly after menopause. And it becomes an issue in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and congestive heart failure affects their quality of life. Like, you know, Rosie O'Donnell, she had the widow maker. Thank God she didn't die. If it was a guy, he probably would have plunked over dead. Susan Lucci from, you know, soap operas had the widow maker. If it was a guy, she would have plunked over dead. But, you know, there, there are women, of course, that... Um, suffer death early in life from heart disease, but it is much more tilted early in life to men. Uh, we're also stupid and we smoke more, eat you know, uh, poorly and seem not to care as has been some of the discussion here. <laughs> it's been really good. If there was one piece of advice, which we're on the spot, one piece of advice that you would give to anyone watching this, what would it be? Log on the Plant Based Network every day, see what's new, watch all three episodes of the Con Chronicle, come visit the Virtual Vet Fest every week, and do that with a gigantic arugula salad with walnuts and hemp hearts. <laughs> that was totally unexpected, but thank you. <laughs> hey, I got to promote the uh, don't bite the hand that's feeding it. Thank, thank you so much. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Is there one piece of medical advice that you would give everyone who's watching? I really do mean it. I'm, I'm passionate. Like I, I call myself high touch, high tech, high fiber cardiologist. I mean, in the days when we could actually hug a patient, I mean, I'm pretty touchy feely. I, I do try and become friends with my patients. Um, uh, high fiber, because of course, that's pretty much the answer to almost all that uh, ails the human body, because that's plants. But uh, high tech. So watch the movie, The Widowmaker Movie. Learn about how you can detect heart disease early in life. Ask your medical team if you qualify to get that done. Uh, and if they say no, just reach out and find me at drjoelcon.com and I'll help you find one in your community because you should test, not guess. Um, if we combine this amazing science of plant based diets with uh, a little extra genetic lab work and testing will drop heart disease in at least our community to undetectable. Agreed. <laughs> Everyone can eat their way to health and exercise their way to health. And outside of genetic factors, you can avoid things like heart disease, strokes, diabetes, and you're dying from and cancer. Can't forget cancer on that list. You can, right. you can avoid those things outside of genetics. You can help live a healthy, long, satisfying life based on the delicious foods that you can put into your body. Just so you know, you, your, your Con Chronicle influenced a, a whole food shopping drop off. That's why the dogs went crazy. Ah. Because I got colored little mini organic peppers and there's Brussels sprouts, right. organic Brussels sprouts. I mean, there's organic lettuce. This, that's what I that's what I do. This COVID situation has made it so that I'm eating healthier than I ever Smart. have. Smart move. Good. So it's true. It's probably the correlation of people eating yeah. and cooking at home. We tend not to put as much fat or salt or sugars in our food when we cook for ourselves. And we tend to eat portion sizes that are smaller and healthier or, or like normal, <laughs> regular right. portion sizes than we do if you're eating at a restaurant where you're eating a minimum of like two, two and a half times what you should be eating in one sitting with you Good know, higher salt, higher sugar, higher fats in the restaurant. So not to say don't support your restaurants because we want them to be there when this is all over, but just don't eat everything on your plate <laughs> or uh, make some adjustments. As to what you're eating. Just take half of your entree home right at the beginning of the meal so that portion control is there and you got something great for the next day too. 
Exactly. Well, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate your joining us today on Virtual Veg Fest Live and being part of the Plant Based Network family. We really appreciate you. This has been a ton of fun for me and I hope incredibly informative for everybody else. Just so you know, we'll be back next Thursday and I think the following Saturday. I'm pretty sure next week we're doing a live cooking demo, <laughs> which is cool with a book publishing company. His name is Alan. I can't remember his last name. I'm sorry, but that'll be next week. So we get to know the cooking demo. And then I don't even know what's going on after that, but we are booked through July. So we will see you. Everyone have a great Saturday. It is absolutely beautiful here in North Carolina, but please be safe. Please social distance. Please wear a mask if you go outside. Don't forget that the virus still exists. It has not Wash gone away. Wash, Wash your it. hands, right? Yes, do right. these open, things. Open doors with your toes, I know. <laughs> right. It's, it's just do everything you can to be safe and help everyone else be safe as well. Dr. Khan, we appreciate you. Thank you. Grazie tante. <laughs> everyone else have a great day. Bye, everyone. <laughs>